Hello and welcome to Fresh Face One Shots. My name is Joey. And I'm Jacob. And we are back with Batman the Brave and the Bold number seven. And we have a uh, a plethora of new stories uh, beginning this time yes. around, uh, which is really, really nice to have. Um, and then, of course, we're continuing Pygmalion, uh, which has been great fun and gets all kinds of weird uh, this time around. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited it, it, to get into this. It does a choice. It does a couple of choices that I think mm -hmm. are interesting. Something that you had actually called it that I hadn't, I guess, really considered when I was reading part one, um, or I hadn't considered much at least, that you, that you were more leaning into, I know, in our last discussion. Um, but yeah, uh, we also have a wild dog story starting up this time, which is cool. And Aquaman, of all things, which is really, really fun. Yes. Um, and, so then yeah, a, and, course, and then, of course, the traditional black and white story. Black and white. Uh, this time by Matthew Rosenberg, which is awesome. Uh, he's he's, he's kind of big in DC right now, so that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, let's get right into this with uh, uh, Batman Pygmalion, uh, part two. Part two. So, yeah. Um, so... A trap is laid. A trap is set. Or actually, no, I, before that. Before that. <laughs> before that, for, I was you a little and... nervous because I'm like, oh no, are we doing Watchmen shit in this Batman book? <laughs> well, no, also we had a similar intro with the story last time, too. Yeah, but this one's actually using a Rorschach mask. Well, that's... yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, it's all right. We're good. We're good. Um, but first, actually, um, uh, we get some Batcat, which is nice for the two of us here. Um, yes, yes, except... Some... We don't, so we, actually. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, hey, it, it just... Look, there's a drawing of Batman kissing Catwoman. Or, I guess, Catwoman kissing Batman, in this case. Um, yes. And that, that's all I need. That's all I need. I, it, it, as long as an issue has that in it, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. I, I win. Um, <laughs> I'm easily pleased. Um, but, yeah, so, okay, I guess it's kind of hard to talk about this portion of the story without talking about the, the, about the big twist that it pulls out later on, and that this is not... This is not Batman. This is not Bruce Wayne. This is our 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 memory wiped Batman. Here is not the Batman that we know and love. Typically, um, we'll get he into more of that later. But it does dude. actually. What's up? He is a dude. He is a dude indeed. Um, but yeah, we uh, we sort of like catch up on. Uh, so we uh, Catwoman has been like spying on this new new Batman um, or someone that she believes to be Batman currently at least. Um, and uh, in, in in sort of like hitting on him first off, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I just really loved the joke when he, when he says like show me what's inside because she has like the stolen stuff on her and I don't know I just I loved that. Um, but yeah, uh, we also learned that um that Catwoman got wind of uh, this Batman here because she knows uh, the woman that uh, that have, that has been housing this Batman. Yes. Um, uh, she was she was stealing money specifically for her. Um, yes yeah which is you know interesting and i think i think i think selena knows clearly obviously knows that this isn't bruce like very probably like it's 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 well i mean that's sort of how it's foreshadowed because it's like uh, oh the bat the bat signals on that must mean yeah you, you have to go mm -hmm. um yeah um, i do wonder though if like if she wasn't entirely sure before this and then like the kiss just sort of like sealed it well, the final panel with her also implies that she knows the trap that's been laid. Like, true, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, or, it's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of the trap, let's get into that. Uh, so yeah, Batman goes to see Gordon atop the GCPD, and it was the, it was the panel. It was the fact that Jim Gordon had like gray hair. I'm like, yep. This is we we're in the present. We're mm -hmm. not we're not in year one. Yep. This is this is not the case. Yes. Um, um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So, so Gordon has set a trap for Batman, um, or this this Batman, whoever this guy is, um, and, uh, and he he, he uh, has his men surround Batman, um, only to be the, 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 the fake Batman does a a, a cold read of, of Gordon, who's like, uh, you know, I call you Commissioner Gordon or James or or, or Jim. Definitely <laughs> He's just Jim. Like, yeah, just like feeling his way around their relationship. Um, and yeah, it's clearly not working. A trap has been laid. Um, uh, the fake Batman uh, tries to like fight back against these other cops here. Um, and is not long after met by the real Batman, I believe. Yes, I think. So I, 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 the thing that's thrown me off, the only thing that's thrown me off, I should say, is the, the black speech bubbles. That's that's true. 
but also, this Batman is in contact with Lucius Fox, so... Maybe? I well, yeah, yeah. I just... I don't know. The black the, the black speech bubbles are really throw me off. Yeah, unless, I mean, it's could... just, unless it really is just to make us think, because I still wasn't sure for a while if this guy uh, wasn't uh, was Bruce or not. Um, but his actions but... in the end feel very Bruce, right? Like... Yeah, yeah. Um, but I meant like like unless it is just to like throw off the reader to be like, oh yeah, well this guy with the black speech bubbles, he's not the real Batman. The one we've been following is the real Batman. And they make you think think that for just that little bit longer, I guess. Um, Maybe. I don't know. I'll be curious to see if there's an actual like reason for the different speech bubbles, um, uh, other than to make or just or just because we're like. in this fake Batman's head could be the only reason. Like true, yeah, yeah. yeah I do like that, that that fake Batman like remains our POV character through the whole story, which is really nice. Yes, yes. Because um, they fight, we learn that this that 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 that, that fake Batman um, has a daughter who mm. is being attacked and you know uh like that this guy was a crook was a crook stole from wayne enterprises stole the cowl stole presumably some of the, the, the costume and we find out that you know uh his sidekick from the first part is in danger mm -hmm. um so it, we end on this very nice little moment of Bruce throwing the of the Batman that we are pretty sure is Bruce, mm -hmm. giving the cowl back to fake Batman, and they leap into action together. It's great. I love that setup. I can't help but feel like there is still something more to it, though. Because again, I, I mean, know, there it, is. It, I think look, there's. I know I'm going on realistically nothing, but the black speech bubbles are still throwing me off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you could be thrown off, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? It could be. It could be intentional, and I am completely wrong. True, uh, true, true, true. I like but, it when you're wrong. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. God damn it. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> let's get into our second story today. Um, the, the start of a brand new story for Brave and the Bold. Uh, Wild Dog, Here Comes Trouble by Kyle Starks. Um, yes. With art by Fernando Passerin, and I think we've read something drawn by Fernando Passerin before, haven't we? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'm not sure. I think we, either maybe I've just read something personally drawn by him. I'm, I'm not entirely I mean, sure. You uh, probably have. I probably have. Point. Yeah, but I can't. I can't help but think that we maybe we covered something on the podcast drawn by him. I don't know. Whatever. If it um, is, it isn't like the bulk of a story. Um, I don't believe. That said, though, least. wonderful artist. Um, wonderful artist. Yeah, does some great wild stuff. dog is a character I am not familiar with at all. Fair uh, enough. And uh, I, this is kind of a co almost a comedy, like it is. Yeah, it, it's 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 played for last, but also you know like like still takes the character of Wild Dog. Yeah, it, it's it still makes you like. It doesn't like he's not completely the butt of the joke, but the story is comedic. If that makes sense, he's also I don't think he's kind of the butt of the joke. Like a he feels bit. kind of like a pastiche of like the edgy '90s grounded realistic superhero. Very much so. Yeah. That's 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 like what I was reading. I don't know if this character is obviously like. When was this character created? Ooh, that I'm not entirely sure of. Po very possibly the nineties. Um. Um. But um. Like it's, it's. Yeah. We. What's nice is that this is there's like a flashback to this character's origin, mm -hmm. and. Which is lovely it, for, for people that aren't familiar with the character, like yourself, of course. Like me. Um, and it's kind of your classic tragic or like, it's, it's, in a way, is this a classic tragic origin? In other ways? It's very much it, its own thing as well. It, it's its own thing, but it's almost comedically American. True. Like, yeah. Like the yeah. He, like high school sports star who has an injury, so he goes to serve gallantly in the military, and then when he comes home, uh, his girlfriend is shot in his arms, so he becomes a superhero. Um, it's like I don't a know. particularly murderous superhero. A particularly murderous uh, who uses guns and is in the Quad Cities in like <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. Um, it's. 
So it feels tongue in cheek almost, right? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I see. I would argue that it doesn't. The story doesn't even necessarily take on that comedic edge until you get more like what I would consider at least the inciting incident of the story, um, where he's literally told that he can't keep wearing the red dog shirt that he's been wearing like his whole time uh, because it's a mascot for a state university and he's 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 violating their trademark and so he has to change his outfit that he wears. <laughs> um, and, and well, that's when the story becomes like really funny. And, and, yeah, and well, because then he, like, he really goes because he goes then to like a sporting goods store mm -hmm. where, um, you know, where his one line of dialogue is, but it doesn't feel right to this this poor cashier. And she's just like, you could like just not, not buy it. Buy it? Like, <laughs> He's what? like, you would think so, right? <laughs> it's just like, I love it. Uh, he goes back to fight these other guys here. After also, we get a, a little tease of whoever our villain for this story may be. Our, so our, our green glove. Um, and a fairly yeah. large head. Yeah. Um, um, could be fun. Could be fun. Uh, looking forward to it. But... Uh, but yeah, he goes back to like fight these other guys here, um, wearing his brand new outfit, with which has uh, a cat on it. Yep, red shirt with a cat on it. Uh, to which this guy he's interrogating uh, calls him Scaredy Cat, and he immediately removes the shirt in front of the guy, throws it out, and continues to interrogate him uh, or attempt to. Um, and and, uh, and we reveal that like the villain behind all of this is someone called Alan. To which my dog goes, no, not fucking Alan. Alan, and I was like, what? <laughs> like this is it's, this is a this is a parody, right? It's like, It's got to be, yeah. It's incredibly. That's, that's got to be the intent. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, cause yeah, it's. I will say this issue overall of of, of Brave and the Bold, it, be, probably because we've started two new stories, and because everything's. Because you know a certain Tom King has moved his story around so many times. Yeah, <laughs> the tonal whiplash in this book. Yeah, is yeah. kind of happening. <laughs> and like, yeah, and once again, I still have to question. I know I brought it up last time, but what are they going to do with the silent film aesthetic of the title cards and all that? When, yeah, we're when, still when doing it apparently. Over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not going to go away until winning card is over but even then they might not because they will have gone like nine issues at that point with uh, with, yeah. with the silent film aesthetic like uh, i don't know that, i don't know what they're issues, gonna do that, that's set nine issues if part four doesn't get delayed again because like yeah. yeah i mean i, I would I can't I, I can't imagine it will at this point joey but i yeah we've I, yeah, said I, that I, before I've, I have learned to never say never with this story so anyway um all right uh aquaman, aquaman Aquaman Communion by uh, uh, Gabriel Hardman, who writes the and draws. The end of this threw me for a loop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um, can't escape that goddamn monkey. Nope. <laughs> it sells. It sells, Jacob. You can't it deny sells. it. Oh, the art is gorgeous, by the way. Like, in, oh, in yeah. this one. Like, I think this might be, in terms of art, my favorite. Like. Very possibly. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I might prefer the wild dog art a little bit more. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, like. It's a very simple story of Aquaman finding in the Atlantic Ocean some fishermen who have been overfishing. Also an anglerfish that for some reason has come to the surface and leads him into the deep where a, a mech suited figure attacks him and drags him onto a submarine where there are aliens called the Dominion. The, the Dominators. You know the Dominators. The, the Dominators, right. What were they From, uh, for, uh, Invasion. Uh, the Invasion crossovers in uh, in Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's... the Dominators. Yep, yeah. Yeah, which is cool. Uh, great to see them here. Um, yeah, uh, and, 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 and when he finds these guys, uh, speaking of uh, classic comic book characters showing up here, um, I mean, I don't think it's Grodd, but... It's Gorilla. It's a, it's a gorilla from it's Gorilla, gorilla City. Uh, from Gorilla City, he asks Aquaman to save, help him save Gorilla City, and that is where part one of this ends. It's um, really, it's oddly enough, surprisingly simple but very effective. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, something that I think could, could be really, really fun going forward. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, I hope this doesn't interfere with whenever they actually revive Aquaman's book because 
It's got to happen that at that's... some point, and we're yeah, still that counting that's down coming. the days to the Joshua Williamson Aquaman book. If it's going to happen, if I were to bet, it's probably going to be right around when like Green Arrow ends. Um, but I don't know. Who knows? Or if we're... Green Arrow gets extended and, the, and, yeah. and Williamson leaves that book. Yeah, um, true. So, anyway, um, let's move on to our last one for today. Uh, the Wager. Uh, our, the Wager by Matthew Rosenberg and uh, with art by uh, Matthias Scalera. Um, but this is, I think, your first Matthew Rosenberg thing, right? I think so. I think so. Cool. Thanks. Cool, cool, cool. He's another one of the one of the big superstars of DC right yeah. now. He's he's got his hands in a little bit of everything. Which so is I know nice. he did the uh, big DC versus vampires thingy. Yeah. Um, um, he's currently doing uh, Joker also, which is cool. Mm. Um, yeah, but yeah, he, he he does a little bit of everything. It's really nice. Um, and yeah, and now he's here uh, with a, a Christmas themed story. It seems, which is nice. Um, nice for for the November issue. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I wonder if maybe it was slated for December originally, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe there'll be another Christmas one next maybe, week. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Um, I mean, we can have two Batman Christmases. Two yeah, Batman yeah. Christmases. I'll take it. I, I will never complain. Um, but uh, but I love this Batman Christmas especially mm-hmm. because it features our favorite fucking Etrigan, Etrigan the, the demon. fucking demon. Oh my god. I love him. He... <laughs> He shows up everywhere. It's so good. Like everything we cover, he's always fucking here. Um, it's wonderful. He's gonna show up in the Marvel block soon. Um, it, it, I mean, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, it's a, it's it's a Batman Etrigan Christmas story, and uh, I I love that. It's about hunting down this uh, this this killer. Um, they're working together on it, uh, and, and the actual cool. wager is is who can find him first mm-hmm. uh, uh, with. Basically, Etrigan's prize being that he would get to murder this guy. <laughs> um, but uh, but thankfully, Batman gets to him first. Uh, does not kill the guy, which is nice. And uh, and that's sort of where it ends. It's very simple. It's nice. I mean, it's um, a simple character piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Rosenberg that, and that, clearly and is having fun with coming up with the rhymes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I was kind of hoping that he would make Batman sort of feed into the rhymes by the end. But it, it never yeah. never amounted to anything. Um, but I, what I do really love always about these black and white stories is that they, they never really like try to do too much. They know they only have eight pages to do what they have to do. So they, they don't they don't overstuff it. They don't try to make it more than what it can be. Yeah. Um, typically. Um, I know like what those first two are where we said like, oh, yeah, I'd like to see like way more. But those yeah, first this couple. One, this um, one oddly enough feels satisfying in its length. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and I would say most of them have felt that same way. Yeah. Um, and they're always a good um, time. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, what's also nice to include it is the, it's a special two page tribute. Yes. This week's, uh, this Keith week's back Giffen. ad. Giffen. Yeah. Keep Giffen. Yep. Um, uh, we lost recently. Um, just an, an unbelievable artist and, and writer for that matter. Right. Um, yeah. Um, just, just, just great little great little book great fun book this month yeah it was a good time very good time um yeah i'm looking forward to seeing uh where they close out the year next month uh where they'll be i believe finishing pygmalion uh with i think King. yes yes and then continuing our middle two stories obviously yep. and they uh, and, a new uh, black and white story Obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, which I'm, I, I'm guessing, hoping that uh, that means that we're finally getting the winning card finale in January. Uh, so that'll be cool. I, I believe um, I've checked this. I check. I believe I checked the solicits at one point, and it's supposed to be. However, we can. We can it's it's been in like three different solicits at this point. <laughs> so, I get it, Tom. You're writing a bunch. You're writing Wonder Woman. Yeah, but um. It, shouldn't take this long to get a four issue little story out him and mitch are very busy people i Um, I get it i get it but also like please you're 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 ruining the momentum you're 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 making this book weird i may actually reread um the the first three parts leading up to it yeah because i mean not because i've really forgotten what happens in them um but also they're just really damn good yeah well Um, i mean i feel like i could use a refresher because yeah especially like to to sit me in back in the mood like with the tone of the story um yeah um, but yeah anyway um that was the newest issue of braving the bolt uh cool it's yeah yeah looking forward to next month as always or i guess this month because this video is coming out in december so whatever yeah you you guys know what we mean um 
All uh, right. Uh, we may as well mention we may have a slight. We may end up having a slight delay on the next issue of uh, One Shots for Brave and the Bold due to just release dates and the holiday. But. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, I think all of our our issues for the end of the year are coming out right around the holiday season. Yeah. So uh, they, they, I mean, two of them are the week before, so we might be able to get those. Yeah. In. So we should be good for those. But Brave and the Bold might be a little late. We'll see. I'm not entirely we'll sure. See how it goes. Um, but yeah. Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, all right. Uh, in the meantime, uh, be sure to check out our other one shots. Uh, we've been covering Wonder Woman by Tom King. Uh, that's been fantastic. Uh, as has uh, Superman by Joshua Williamson. Those have both been great. Um, check out our other Batman Brave and the Bold one shots that we've done in the past. And uh, of course, the main podcast of Fresh Face yes. Comics. So we're currently uh, on our Marvel block. We are uh, almost done releasing. Actually, uh, when this comes out, uh, tomorrow will be the uh, second episode of our Daredevil uh, by Frank Miller coverage, uh, which is really cool. And then we're moving on to a new kind new of thing, is, which yeah. I technically so, already know, but I am spoiling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess that about does it. Uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. Um, uh, I guess until next time, this has been Joey Morgan and Jacob Licklider. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>